in the middle of Britain's hottest spell for a good while, I'm just about to start planning for next spring. Today I'm going to be sowing some spring cabbage and this variety is called Durham Early. I have ground it before and the other varieties I've done in the past is one called Pixie and another one is called Duncan which is quite a reliable variety. Um, for the newcomers out there, spring cabbage is named purely because it refers to the time of year that you do the harvest, just like you get summer cabbage and winter cabbage. So uh, spring cabbage you really can sow it two times in the year. There's spring where you'll harvest in the same year or later on in the year like now well we'll sow it, overwinter it and then harvest very early spring. You can pick it as soon as it's showing signs of leaves which is known as spring greens but if you leave it a bit longer it will actually heart up and then that is the true spring cabbage. One thing you can do when you harvest it is chop it off and then put a cross into the stalk which is still in the ground and you do often get quite little small florets bonus crop but uh, that's, that's up to you whether you do it or not so um, I'm going to be sowing in cell trays there's uh, 10 cell trays I probably only need about 6 to go in but I'll, I'll put the 10 in and uh, we'll see how it goes the reason I grow in the cell trays is uh, it's more or less ideal uniform conditions so the plants will grow more or less the same and the big is when you do the transplant into the allotment there's very very little root disturbance so we'll get on with the thingy I'll just be dibbing I'll be put these about 10 millimeters 12 millimeters deep and I'll just be putting one seed in each hole and there won't even be putting them in, in the greenhouse, I'll germinate these outside because we're still experiencing quite warm temperatures here. I've just spent a tiring day clearing this bed out behind me. I made the fatal mistake of mixing the dahlias and the cosmos in with the crimson crushed tomatoes and they all intermingled with each other and consequently everyone suffered. Unfortunately the cosmos had to be wiped out, there's nothing I could do with that. I managed to get all of the dahlias out. I put those in pots and then a bit wilty, but today has been extremely hot. I'm sure when I've given them a good soaking, they'll be okay. And I've cut most of the foliage off now for the Crimson Crush. I'm absolutely amazed how much fruit is on there. I must have filled four trays of green tomatoes where the limbs have snapped off. And I've also took some red off. I've left some red on here, as you can see and that will probably help the others to uh, turn a bit quicker but uh, that's the lesson I've learned for next year not to mix them, the flowers will be going in a separate area of the row During the last week or so, I've noticed that the onions have started to fold over, so that's a good indication that some are ready to lift, but not all of them. It isn't all good news. This bed here has got a mixture of Alsa Craig and a few Robinson's Mammoth, and in general most of them have gone over now, so it's a good indicator that they can be lifted and ready for drying. Just the other side of the plank there, those there are the Kelsey ones the ones that seed out of Pete Edwards and they're just starting to get out but I think I'll give them another week or so just to give them that last bit of chance to fatten up a bit more.
that's the first harvest of 2018 onions. This is a mixture of um, Alsa Craig and Robinson's Mammoth. Just uh, make a quick note there about the drying trays I use. This is just a normal plastic baker's tray with a delivered bread in. And I've got uh, some line pins into the ground and the trays are just suspended on there and get in the air. Thread the onions through, just make sure they're not touching and the air can get to them. Good thing about this is that uh, if we do ever have that thing called rain, just a shower, I can pop some out of the top, keep them dry. If it's anything more permanent, just lift them off, the tray is complete, and put them into the greenhouse. We have had one disappointment with the onions, and believe it or not, these here are supposed to be the brood. Never on this earth are these a brewing. These seeds are bought from DT Brown, and uh, <laughs> that's where they've turned out. It did cross my mind for a brief moment that I may have got the seeds mixed up, but I'm fairly confident in my method of labelling seeds and trays and that, so that didn't last long. About a week ago, next door neighbour on the plot here, he's also grown to brewing sourced his own seed and had exactly the same up. One more thing to actually cement the confirmation, there's a Dan from Allotment Diaries, he recently put a video up showing the harvest of his fantastic crop of shallots, Zabrun. I put a comment on telling him the issue I'd had with the seed and how they hadn't turned out into banana type and somebody had added a comment below saying they'd had exactly the same where they turned into globe onions. So there's three of us there which had the same problem. I've got one more onion bed to weed and that's the send one here. This comprises of the long red Florence banana type shallots and also my uh, leeks at that end. So I might be doing that now or possibly tomorrow now. I've had a long day in the hot sun and uh, once I've weeded it I'll come back to you. Just looking into the brassica cage here, notice they've got a cauliflower there which is on the limit before blowing and another one there. So I think I'll be taking those two out now before they start to go over. That's what we got. Um, another day, and I think they'd have gone past it, just about saved it. So, uh, two small cauliflowers. This morning started off as a bit of a shock, in as much as I had to put long trousers on. But our mate upstairs looks as though he's uh, resumed normal service and he's flicked the lasers on just for a little minute. Although there's a big black cloud over Bill's mother's over there, so we could have a bit of rain later on. What I'm going to do at the moment, I've got uh, six buckets of first early potatoes still to unearth. So I'll be doing that now. I won't be filming it because you've seen the first two and um, hopefully it'll be the same. I just want to get them out right, so they don't get gather scab. Besides, I'll be using the buckets. They'll be going straight back into action as soon as I've emptied them. Just had five minutes of rain and a few claps of thunder, but that was short-lived. Uh, I managed to empty the buckets of potatoes and I'll just show you what we got. That's a 30 litre bucket and the potatoes in there, the charlotte, the first early I planted. I've just got one load of soil to bag back up. I'll put another three along there. As I say, I'll be using these probably tomorrow, which I'll be filming to show you what I'm doing. Well, our thunderstorm didn't last too long. In fact, it lasted about three minutes. Well, our friend of ours who lives probably two miles away, he said they had a good downpour and the water was flowing down the roads. Just showers. Anyway, um, the soil that I've got left from the potato buckets that are on earth yesterday are going to be put back into use and they're going to get the Christmas potatoes underway. A bit of a change from the usual charlottes that I grow for Christmas. And this time we're going for International Kidney or Jersey Rolls. 
some people call them. Um, pick these up at the end of the planting potato planting season, and as you can see, I picked them for 25 pence a bag. When I did get them, I put them in the uh, plastic salad tray of the fridge just to keep them cool and dormant. And these have been out probably two or three days just to uh, wake them up. So I'll be potting these on using the soils that we got from yesterday in a variety of containers. Right, this is the compost will come out the old potatoes. Back in action again now. But I'll give it a bit of a boost, rejuvenation. And I'll add a few handfuls of the 6x manure. And also some wood fishing barrel. Just mix all that up now, and then we'll have a look at the planting tubs of music. The tubers have got bigger spruts on than I uh, actually wanted, but we'll have to make do with these. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'll be planting in two different containers. I'll just show you. This is just a normal 30 litre bucket. And I'll be putting four tubers in here on two different layers in the crisscross pattern, just like we normally do with the first earliest we planted a little earlier on in the year. But the second one I'll be doing is in this florist bucket from my local supermarket. No idea what volume that is, but I'll be just putting one tuber in there. And it'll be interesting to see how the two compare over the years regarding yield. Final watering. I'll probably set them on the way for a good crop for Christmas. These will be staying out here now until the end, at least to August, September, until we get any frosts, and then I'll be going into the greenhouse. Well, that's about it for this one. The weather looks as though we're going to definitely have some rain this time, so uh, if it tells out for the next day or two. I'll be uh, pulling up the calcium onions and also probably getting the shallow potatoes out the ground. But we'll save that till next time. So until then, see you later. Bye for now.